Hi, welcome back. This is Professor Lazarus again, continuing with our discussion on the depreciation series. In this lecture, I will walk you through the calculations for calculating depreciation expense using the double declining balance method. Before I start my lecture, I'm going to step aside for a minute and give you an opportunity to write down the information that I have on the whiteboard behind me. Okay, let's get right into the formula for the depreciation expense for year one. In our example, that's 2011. Your depreciation expense for year one is your book value at the start of year one multiplied by your double declining rate, your DD rate. So next I'm going to give you a formula for the book value at the start of year one and then I'll give you a formula for the double declining rate and then we'll combine the two formulas to calculate the depreciation expense for year one. So, book value at the start of year 1, 2011, is equal to the original cost minus accumulated depreciation at the start of year 1. Note the similarity in time references. Book value at the start of year 1 and AD at the start of year 1. So, your time references must coincide with each other. Your AD at the start of year 1 is usually zero because if you think about it, AD at the start of year one means you've just bought the asset. So from an accounting standpoint, when you just bought the asset, we don't take any depreciation on it or we don't consider it as having any depreciation for these calculation purposes. The formula for double declining rate would be 100% over your useful life in years multiplied by two because it is the double declining method. And in our example, that's 100% over five years multiplied by 2 gives us 40%. Next, we'll take these two formulae and combine them to calculate the depreciation expense for 2011 or year 1, which should be your book value at the start of year 1 that we calculated up here as 11,000 times 40% is equal to 4,400. You'll note that one thing here and under this method, unlike the other methods, is we do not factor the salvage value or residual value at the start of the calculations. Instead, we factor the salvage value or residual value during the last year of calculations, and I'll explain to you more about that uh, in a few minutes. Next, we are going to calculate the depreciation expense for 2012. The formula again for this would be book value at the start of year two, which is 2012, multiplied by the double declining rate. So let's calculate now the book value at the start of 2012. The book value at the start of 2012, which is year two, is equal to your original cost minus accumulated depreciation at the start of 2012. Now here's what you have to keep in mind. Your AD at the start of 2012, at the start of year two, is the same as your AD at the end of year one. This is the same logic as your ending cash balance for one year is the same as your beginning cash balance of the next year, or your ending inventory of one year automatically becomes, or is the same as your beginning inventory of the next year. So same kind of logic here. So 
when we put the numbers into the formula, it's 11,000 original cost minus 4,400 accumulated depreciation at the end of year one. Now here's again something else to keep in mind. The 4,400, if you recall, was our depreciation expense for year one. But I'm also showing that as your AD at the end of year one. How is this possible? Let's go back and briefly refresh our memory in terms of what is AD. Accumulated depreciation is the total depreciation you've taken on an asset from the day you bought it until today. And today in this case happens to be the end of year one or beginning of year two. So the depreciation expense for year one also becomes your accumulated depreciation at the end of year one. So it's 11,000 minus 4,400 is equal to 6,600. Next, we'll put these numbers together and calculate the depreciation expense for 2012. And the depreciation expense for 2012 would be the 6,600, which represents your book value at the start of year two times your double declining rate. Your double declining rate did not change. That stays the same, 40% throughout the years. And in this case, we come up with the resulting number of 2,640, which is our depreciation expense for year two, or represented by the year 2012. Now, what if I ask you, what is your accumulated depreciation at the end of 2012, at the end of year two? How would you go about calculating that? Your AD at the end of 2012 is basically your depreciation expense for 2011 plus your depreciation expense for 2012. So if you combine the two years of depreciation expenses, you'll end up with your accumulated depreciation at the end of 2012, which is $7,040. What if I asked you another question? I asked you, what is your book value at the end of 2012? So again, let's go back to the formula. Book value is original cost, 11,000, minus your accumulated depreciation at the end of 2012. We just calculated our accumulated depreciation at the end of 2012 at 7,040, which if you recall was year one plus year two depreciation. So your book value at the end of 2012 would be $11,000 minus a 7,040 is equal to 3,960. And you continue with this uh, calculations uh, for each successive year. Now, when you get to the final year, however, there's a little twist and you have to be careful about that. Here's a guideline that you have to remember when you calculate the depreciation expense for the final year. The guideline is the book value at the end of the last year, at the end of the final year, cannot be lower than your residual sal or salvage value. So therefore, oftentimes when you get to the final year of calculations, you may not be able to use the formula that I provided you because using that formula may cause you to have a depreciation expense that in turn causes your book value to go lower. So you have to manually work out that number for the depreciation expense and not just use the formula that was provided. But keep this guideline in mind as you get into the final year. And that pretty much wraps up our discussion on the double declining balance method. As you can see, uh, this method is one of the more complicated methods of calculating depreciation expense. A lot of different formulae, but try to work through it. Listen to this tape as many times as you have to. Work through as many examples as you can to get proficient in it. And soon you'll have this information down pretty easily uh, to reproduce it in an exam situation. So again, this is Professor Lazarus signing off. And as I always like to say, yes, you can repeat with me, accountants work their assets off. Thank you.